Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Creo Live Simulation, the future of real-time simulation is here. Creo Simulation Live gives engineers the ability to perform simulation in real time on a parametric model. It, uh, it puts structural, thermal, and modal analysis into the hands of designers instantly while the designs, as you are going to see very shortly, Today's webinar presenter, Paul Dye, is an application engineer with PTC and a member of the Virtual Creator Center of Excellence. He comes equipped with extensive knowledge of Creo, along with many of the powerful extensions that support Creo's parametric modeling capabilities. And now let me show you where you can find Creo Simulation Live on our page at novage.com. And I want to remind you that Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at novage.com. And also want to remind you that we're all over social media, so if you want to check out latest releases, or um, last minute offer, uh, come find us. And I'm also recording this uh, webinar, so you can watch it again on our YouTube and Vimeo channel. So you have no excuses. And now let me share the screen with Paul so he can show you uh, Career Simulation Live in all its might and power. Take it away, Paul. And thank you very much. And again, my name is Paul Dye with PTC. And I'm going to be the one essentially going through and showing you exactly what we're capable with with Creo Simulation Live. And to get into that, before we dive too deep into it, I do want to take a step back and just talk about some of the challenges that some of, the, of our other customers have voiced in the past, some of the things that we see out in the industry, or maybe even some of the problems you're seeing in your systems today. So to start, analysis is really too time consuming to utilize properly in the early stages your models are in a constant state of change and your engineers tend to rely on experience and just their intuition when making pretty critical design decisions. And it's because we have limited support for any analysis-led design and optimization. And analysis is really seen as something that only the expert can do and this is mostly late stage in the development cycle. What this does is it really leads to a reliance on late stage physical prototyping and testing because we need a way to validate the performance of our designs but it really causes a disconnect where we see two different worlds really forming for one in the design and going through different iterations and another separate world for analysis and everything that goes on for validation. And that's really what we're looking to break down upon and kind of build into one environment. And that's what we're doing with Simulation Live. We're taking real-time simulation capabilities, putting them right into the NCAD environment. So we're able to rapidly explore and really instantly understand the impact of the design changes that we're making. This starts to remove the barrier between our design and our analysis worlds, really creating a unified modeling and simulation environment. We're integrating the simulation environment with the design environment, allowing our engineers to see the changes to the analysis as they make modifications to the model. This is really designed to be easy to use, easy to work with, and works with the common data model. And this extension was at its base designed out with the designer in mind, not necessarily the expert analyst. So as a consistent user interface that's easy to set up load to constraints, very similar to what you'd see with a normal simulate module, but now we're working in a single unified environment for design analysis. So what we've done is partnered with ANSYS and worked with their Discovery Live simulation engine and embedded it natively within CREA. What this does is it allows us to use all of Korea's parametric and direct modeling capabilities while then seeing the model simulation right on the model itself. We have multiple different types of analysis supported again. So we have linear structural and also thermal and modal forms of analysis. And this analysis changes off of whatever changes that you make to the model. So it allows you to go through and really explore all these different what if scenarios. So if I move this rod out and make this extrude or change these faces around, what does that do to the structural integrity or maybe the thermal analysis of my part? This is really completely new technology as powered and developed by ANSYS with that discovery live simulation. 
And so that solver engine uses the graphics card rather than the CPU, really giving you magnitudes, more abilities of going through and running the analysis. And so this does require the use of a CUDA enabled NVIDIA graphics card. And then we have a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM for optimal performance. And then again, that optimal performance more starts around eight gigabytes of RAM. What I'd like to do now is move over into our Creo environment so we can see what this workflow of working with Creo simulation looks like. So what we have here on the screen is actually the iron chassis off of a Polaris snowmobile assembly. So this is what we're gonna be working with to show the process of working with Creo simulation live. What I'll do first is work on this on just the part level, see kind of the basic setup, and then we'll take a step back and then look at that and how it works on the whole assembly. First, what we'll do is define our materials. In this case, we have an aluminum alloy, and then we'll go through and start to define our structural parameters for our study. So first thing we'll do is lay out our constraints, maybe exactly where we want certain fixtures or certain faces to be fixed into place. And then what we'll do is go through and apply our loads. In this case, I'm going to apply some surface loads on here. One thing to notice while we're going through this process is with a normal analysis or simulation tool, you'd have to go through and defeature this model to even get it to mesh properly. But with this, we don't worry about any of that. We just simply have to go through and apply our loads, apply our constraints, and we leave the model as it is. So we leave in all the small holes and small rounds or even interferences with the model. We don't have to worry about any of that. We don't wanna work with that defeatured model. We wanna work with the model that I, the designer, went through and designed with. Right, and now that we have all these structural parameters laid out, we'll run through the simulation. And just like that, we have our results. And that's how long it takes. There's no waiting around. As soon as we click the button, we're starting to get understand exactly what's happening with that study. And we can do that very visually by maybe animating this and seeing that deformation on the model. Or maybe if we want to see a bit more true to life, less exaggerated version of this, we can click that true deformations block and then see right on the model exactly what's that, what that's doing. And then maybe me as the design engineer, I'm more worried about von Mises stress that we're seeing on the model, seeing if we have any kind of hot spots or certain areas we're getting a high amount of stress. We can see here with our maximum stress marker that we are seeing that. So what I'm gonna use is our simulation probe. So this allows me to click on a surface or an area that I'm concerned with and get information on there. So here I can see a maximum value for our von Mises stress. And then I can start to go through and make changes using Creo Parametric. In this case, I'll simply move out one of these walls with our flexible modeling tool. And that's going to then update all the, around, the surrounding geometry around that. And then once we make that change, we can see how the analysis results update. All right, and there we have it. So we can see that stress value starts to go down a bit. And that's really what we wanna do here is, whenever I make changes to these parts, I wanna make sure that it's actually affecting the values that we're concerned with. So for example, if I increase the value of this radius here, we're gonna make sure that it is actually having an effect on the stress values that we're seeing. And in this case, it actually is. So again, that's the general process of what we do in running through working with simulation live, is seeing those values and kind of design or guiding our design intent moving forward. This also works well with other extensions. In this case, we can work with a design exploration session. So this is our extension for looking through and working with different design iterations and essentially saving all these different design iterations right on the model itself. So no longer working with a bunch of different files where we have to go through and sort through different iterations of our design. We have this all saved in a nice, neat, robust environment and go through and make whatever changes we need to. So in this case, maybe I'm a design engineer and I happen to be working with our part here and someone tells me we need to add in a trajectory rib in order to spread out some of the forces that we're seeing here. So then what I'll do is apply a point load right on the surface of our model here. So we can see that stress value, and then we can start to see exactly whenever we make a change, how that stress value is gonna be updated. So again, we're gonna go through and just do our normal Creo parametric work. So whatever we'd be doing on a normal basis, such as 
making extrudes, doing rounds, creating sweeps, lofts, whatever you need to, to get your part working exactly as you would do on a normal basis, but then see all those analysis and simulation results as soon as you make the change. So here we see the stress value is actually increasing, but then we see on the model itself, the values are being spread out across that face a lot more. And again, once we do that, we can save that as a checkpoint in our design exploration session and keep moving along. In this case, I'm not going to save into that design exploration extension. We're just gonna simply move forward with the part we had going in. So again, this worked very well working on the part level, but again, whenever we take a step back, how is this all gonna keep up when we work with something more complex like this whole chassis assembly? Well, the process of getting into that is actually going to look pretty similar. So to start off, we are again going to define our constraints and loads. In the back, we can see maybe we have this welded down, so it's not gonna be moving around. And then next we can apply some loads to start to simulate maybe something like a shaking force happening in our chassis. So having a downwards force over on the right, and then maybe we'll have a resulting upwards force being applied over on the left. Again, we could have a lot of different things happening here with small holes or interferences, all rounds on top of this model. We don't worry about any of that. We just leave the model exactly how it is and run it through the simulation. And there we have it. Just as fast as we did on the part level, we're getting results right back on this whole assembly. Again, this is something with a normal analysis tool. It could take us hours or even days just to set up the model to get into a mesh to actually run through the analysis. With this, we're getting it back basically as soon as we can click the button and start to really visualize exactly how this is working. And we didn't have to change our model to a defeatured model that's completely different from the model that we designed. We're working with the model that we created and start to understand exactly how we're using it. In this case, I can see we're having some pretty high deformation values up in the top right of this chassis assembly. So I'll again use a live simulation probe to get more information there. In this case, we're seeing about one millimeter of deformation. And what I have here actually in my model tree is a few parts suppressed that I can add back into the assembly to kind of act as a support to maybe drop down that deformation value. So I'll go through and I will unsuppress all these parts that we have added in and we can see the simulation results update. Then we see those ISO surfaces, those colors being updated, and there are deformation values being displayed. So going from about one millimeter down to 0.34 millimeters of deformation. So again, this is a huge drop off, and now we know that that's what's happening as soon as we make that change. So the next thing I'd like to do with this chassis assembly is look into a modal study. So this is more looking into the vibrations and more kind of information around what we're seeing with that type of study. And the process will look similar in laying out some of our constraints here on the surfaces. We wanna make sure they are not moving around when we go through and run the simulation. And that's all we need to do to jump right into this. What I'll do first is I'll take a step back and remove some of the support structure that we added in with that last assembly and then we'll add it back in later, maybe to see again how that simulation changes with those parts. And we see those surfaces being updated and then we're done and can look through our results. And so again, maybe we're worried about our deformation and different mode sets. You can see those different deformation magnitudes being displayed there with different frequency values and I can really visualize this again and see exactly how this part's being affected with how I laid out my assembly. I can switch to different mode sets to look at different frequency values. So if I switch to number four, we can look at a deformation magnitude of 129 hertz, and really understand exactly what that looks like. Again, what I can do now is actually insert some of the other parts that we were working with and see how the simulation is going to update and see what that looks like. Right, and now this is running through different values, starting to understand the model it's working with, and then we can start to really understand that very visually. So now we're seeing around 161 hertz of deformation with that frequency. See how that's affecting our model, and that happens to be in the very back around that frequency. Then what if we change that to another mode? Again, back to the front, you can really see that's different from what we had going into here. So a higher frequency range, different from what we started with, 
but now we really understand exactly how that's working. All right, and now I'd like to do is switch over and work with another model that we have here, which is actually a, a an engine block that we can look at more of the thermal side of this type of study. So that's what I'm going to do here is work with our, again, simulation live on the thermal side. And laying this out, we're going to work more with some convection values rather than maybe fixtures of certain surfaces. So what we're doing here is essentially looking at different surfaces that we're applying our convection to. Maybe we have a convection coefficient being laid out here around 60 watts and then a bulk temperature being applied to these surfaces as well. I can also do similar to how I did with the structural uh, study that we did earlier. We can apply a load in the form of a heat flow to this top surface and define the values, define the units that we want to use. We could also do things like applying heat flux or prescribed temperatures and have those laid out in our constraints and loads as well. So now let's simply go through and simulate this to see what some of those results look like. And again, we don't even have to wait around for these. We can simply essentially click that button and then really start to gain an understanding of whenever I apply that heat flow, whenever I apply that convection, how is that affecting my engine block? Different ways of re really viewing these uh, results that we're getting, different composite views, min and max views, and even changing units to change that legend up in the top right to see what type of values that we're getting. And once you have this, you can go through and really inspect this model, seeing exactly where you're getting low values of type of uh, temperature values and min minimums, maximums of where you're really getting certain areas that you might need to change up the design. And again, fully go through, inspect this very visually, and we're not sending this off to another third party to hopefully get results back in a day or so, just for them to tell you that you need to go back and change something. Well, now we're getting these results back, and we can simply go ahead and keep working with our design. And so now, moving forward with the Creo Simulation Live tool, we're really looking for engineers and different designers to perform analysis early and often. So we don't want it to be this separate realm of analysis later on in the design process. We want to bridge that gap and really have that unified analysis driven design. And at the end of the day, get your products out a lot faster and at the end of the day, a higher quality. And so that's really all I have to show you in terms of what we're working with in the tool itself. So I will hand it back off and we can take any type of questions heading into the end and we'll kind of wrap up and move forward. Thank you so much, Paul. That was really cool. Uh, I don't see any questions yet, so I'm going to give a couple of uh, minutes for everybody to collect themselves from the presentation and, and realize um, the potential of Career Simulation Live. Otherwise, if there's no question, I'm going to show you again where you can um, get Career Simulation Live at Novedge.com. This is a product page. And it's, um, you know, if you have any doubt, any questions about pricing and configuration, just give us a call. We're always available. And Paul, there really are no questions. You were so uh, informative. That was great. And uh, I want to remind everybody where we are, basically all over the social media. And uh, I also want to let you know that I've been recording the presentation so you can watch it again on YouTube or Vimeo, just search for Noveg. Thank you again uh, for today's demo. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye, everybody.